Welcome everyone. So I am Michelle Chatham and I'm here with Corey Malloy and Brianna Skinner and we're going to have a little roundabout today about one of my favorite subjects which is ecology. <laughs> so, so one of the things that um, I've been working with over the last gosh at least six or eight years are, are clients who have been uh, labeled as airway cases, and even young children who have been called um, tongue-tied or craniofacially uh, phenotyped into this airway trajectory, right, where um, a lot of kids are diagnosed as tongue-tied, and then they have their tonsils and adenoids removed, and then they go into early orthodontics, and, and so um, one of my goals and visions is that we we learn how to intercept that early earlier and cleaner and create really healthy strong systems and families um, that actually change the shape of of children um and so uh years ago when I read uh West today prices nutrition and physical uh degeneration um, Weston A. Price was a dentist in the 20s who went around the world and took all these wonderful photos of people who um, lived in their natural habitat habitats, first peoples, indigenous peoples, people who had cultural communities, who um, lived in the traditional ways of their people and noticed their big, beautiful faces and arches and how healthy they were. And, um, and then also co contrasted and compared that with people who had left those tribes and even a generation later had all of the craniofacial, um, we'll call it dysmorphia, related to what we now would call an airway case. And so, um, of course, being a dentist and trained using the dental lens, he went straight to the food, straight to the teeth, um, because that's what was showing the symptoms of the, the changes in um, diet. He attributed it to diet. Um, he was looking at the food that they ate. So refined foods, industrialized um, foods, things like that. However, um, one of the things that's not as much talked about in that so-called like uh, view is the change in ecology. So these, these folks went from, um, they went from their, their, habitats, we'll call it, like we're mammals, right? So habitat um, of their community, their family, their their ceremonies, their culture, the way they did things, the way they ate, the way they lived in the on the ground, um, the way they celebrated the seasons and things like that, and went to a very modernized, colonized, industrialized uh, way of living. So they wore shoes, they ate the modernized food, they were no longer living in the rhythms and the ways of the world. And um, so in my, in my world uh, of the Airway Intelligence Institute, I call that the collapse of the human, the collapse of the human's field because their, their ecology has changed. So their relationship to each other and their relationship to their environment drastically changed. So when I started the Airway Intelligence Institute a few years ago, and I began to train healthcare professionals as to... Um, to, to begin to look at ecology and coach ecology, um, I began to notice some really fantastic things that were happening in, um, in people and in families and the level of healing and, and um, uh, just results that were being seen without traditional airway interventions. So not rushing off and doing a tongue tie release because I'd seen enough of those go sideways where kids were get their tongue tie releases and, and just collapse. Um, so these kids were not opening up and they weren't becoming vital and vibrant and whole and healthy and, and taking on um, the essences and the, the, the vibrations of health and, and wellness. And so I began to ask questions like, well, what's going on here? So with my, with my clients, um, I began to teach these concepts of ecology and noticed that the whole families were shifting. And so um, I'm going to have um, Corey introduce herself 
and kind of how she kind of got into this, we'll call it into this world um, with the Airway Intelligence Institute and just a little bit of the beginning of how things happened. And then I want Brianna to introduce herself and we're gonna have a, a roundabout about ecology. Yes. Okay. So I'm Corey Malloy and I moved to Maui about two and a half years ago, found Michelle, I believe through a Facebook group. And to give you a picture of where I was then, because maybe some people listening may be able to see themselves in my story was kind of the lens of things being a little bit more separated, compartmentalized where, uh, you know, my son was presenting what I had, my understanding was, you know, lip tie, tongue tie. Um, and essentially the question came up of, oh, you know, the, the typical question that the mothers asked, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I, I mm. eat so well. I, um, how did I not catch this? You start to, uh, Michelle kind of gave me the words and understanding of um, seeing where I was going back in time and going, well, this person didn't catch it and this person didn't catch it and kind of doing the victim, the victim blame spiral. And I met Michelle and again, my understanding was just kind of honed in on the acute area of the mouth at the time and looking to the mouth as presenting all of the, let's call them problems. And so got connected with Michelle, thought I wanted one thing for Michelle and Michelle kind of introduced me to zoom out and look at the bigger picture of what was going on. So I, I got introduced to her first mentorship program that I did with her, which was Power to Change. And she, I loved uh, looking back how the uh, kind of sequence of that was not necessarily let's, okay, let's look in Koa's mouth. Koa is my son, my firstborn. Let's look in Koa's mouth and see what's going on. It's okay, let's look at the family uh, dynamics, your environment, your charge, uh, what things look like as a whole before we ever go into the mouth and look at what's going on there. Um, it's so much more about how the body is, is holding itself, the frame, the space that is being created. And so I found her, let's see, that was back in June or July of 2020. That was my first time working with her. And then essentially um, I gave birth to another child since then. And essentially as our family has grown, we have needed to resource and have the foundation to be able to hold that space for our family. And so we did a secondary mentorship with Michelle in, uh, when did that start? July of 2022. That was our couples container where we were really getting into the nitty gritty of the family dynamics and being able to, yeah, look at the ecology of of, of our families. And I don't know if that answered your full question. You were asking me how I got, how I got into this. Right. Yeah. And then what was your secondary question? And then also just uh, go ahead and give a plug for what you do and your, your programs, what your business is. Sure. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm really into the world of metabolic health and, um, as I'm, you know, headed into the future, I'm realizing that is kind of one spoke in the wheel of what my big uh, passion is, which is sustainability in general. And so um, metabolic health is essentially um, coming down to the cellular level of the body and building up the charge. And so I had more of the cognitive understanding of uh, the food piece, the nutrition piece of being able to um, sustainably uh, build up charge in the body to watch changes happen. Uh, um, but this huge dynamic that Michelle was able to introduce me to was uh, truly, truly life-changing to me um, and being able to bring that in, and introduce that into my audience as well. So I, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I developed a course on metabolic health, developed a podcast. Um, Michelle came onto the podcast a few months ago to talk about the tongue tie world and essentially my audience is really in the holistic realm. And so a lot of the mothers um, kind of were going through their own journey of, okay, I had a baby and they had a tongue tie and then we had a release and somehow they did not maintain or yield the results or the outcome that I thought that they would achieve. And so a huge curiosity and shift has been happening over the last couple of years where mothers are realizing 
this is not the, the the one answer. And it's been a beautiful thing to watch this evolving um, as understanding has been made for the bigger picture of what's going on. Yeah, beautiful. And you can they can find you at Cor at uh, at Corey Malloy on Instagram and um, I forgot your website. It just went. Um, my website, it actually, the URL changed. It's actually, it's actually freely rooted podcast.com. It's okay. changed since the last time we talked. So freely rooted podcast.com okay. is fine. Well, there you go. My website. Okay, here it is. Okay. Brianna, tell your, your story, how we got connected and a, a little bit about yourself, what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Brianna. Um, I actually found Michelle through Corey, um, the podcasts that you guys did together. Um, before that, I'd always, I think you had done something before together or Michelle popped up at some point. And I remember like looking at your Instagram, Michelle, and being like, huh, I, I, I'm just going to kind of like, you know, I'm going to pay attention to this. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Um, and so finally listened to, um, yeah, your podcast and um, my husband, we have, he's always had a fascination with Hawaii. Anyways, all these things were kind of coming together at one time and I was listening and just some of the words that Michelle was using just started to like spark things in me things that I had already been thinking about um so for our family um had two home births um did everything right uh ate healthy um was charged in some ways um and still my kids both um were just presenting with just what you would call issues, um, not just airway issues, but also, um, I guess now I have the language for like res resourced issues. Um, they just were not the bright lights that I saw for them. It was just not, it wasn't happening. So we um, ended up moving to Maui in May um, and we started, I think, Michelle, a container with you in March. Is that correct? Okay. So yeah, started the container in March um, and then switched containers and joined um, the couples container um, with the Malloys. Um, and yeah, I mean, just, yeah, our life is completely different. Um, I think before I just was kind of what you were saying, um, Corey, very acutely focused on certain things. Um, uh, what's going on here? What's going on here? You know, what, what's happening in the body and, and just didn't have the language, um, and, and thought maybe just like, I know a lot of other moms do, you know, we need to, we need to outsource. We need to go to someone who do we need to go to, you know, uh, this modality, this modality, let's figure this out. Let's fix this. Let's change this. Um, and Michelle has, uh, in short helped us realize that, those things can come from within and can come from within our family. And that ecology piece is huge um, and things need to shift in order to change. And so, yeah, that's where we are now. Yeah. So Corey, um, thanks, Brianna. And you guys are realtors and you're here on Maui and you're raising your kids here. And um, you guys are at Brianna Skinner home. Correct. Yes. And at Colin underscore underscore Skinner right. on Instagram. Yeah. And so Colin talks a lot about resourcing. So we use this word resourcing. So Colin talks a lot about that. And he actually has some really beautiful like flip throughs about what that actually means. And the other thing, the other word we're using that people don't, that may not know here is, is the word charge. And so the word, what that means is that charge is actually what's reflected in your human battery so it's just like the the battery indicator on your phone if it's down to like one bar you know that you fix it that that phone fix and it go dead well humans are the same way and so we have a battery capacity because we're batteries and we're plants with complicated emotions um so we have a capacity as well and so one of the things we talk about in container is growing that capacity and filling the battery, right? So we want that charge to grow because it's from that power that we do our healing, that actually our emotions are regulated, that we're able to, to um, create and do work and, and love and, and everything that makes us human, right? So when that's decreased, 
we have lower we have lower power reserves to do the things that make us human. So we focus a lot on uh, learning uh, the roots of ecology, like in nature, how that really happens. And also we talk about biohacking. And then at the top of the pyramid, we actually talk about um, interventions. And so in let's take the tongue tie world, for example, in the tongue tie world, all of the solutions lie at the top level of intervention, right? The cut, the therapy, the it, the outsourcing and doing to of the human rather than what's coming up from the bottom to actually push the system open and and bring us into our full expansion and full consciousness as as beings, right? So um, I try to take uh, the, what I call the three, the three circles of, of, um, encompassing human, which is the structure, our electromagnetics, and then our chemical metabolic and explore those fully, and then kind of push them together like a Venn diagram. And that part that's overlapped in the center is where the magic happens. So when you get your structure on and you're stable, mobile, and agile and supple, and when your electromagnetics and your, your field, your actual bio field is clean and clear and full and radiant, that's another part. And then your, your chemical metabolic piece, you're detoxing naturally, you're, you're getting all of the natural food resources that you need that are closely related to how your DNA needs to consume that you get this you get this overlapping like a Venn diagram of where the magic happens right and so that's what you guys with the deep dive went in with the deep dive and then um, I know Corey like in the second container you and Kyle did a lot in the electromagnetic piece you cleaned up your your past you cleaned up your perspective you cleaned up um, how you how you relate to each other. You got your blueprint clear about who you are on the planet and why you're here and how um, actually the I'm going to say the 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 God ordained source ordained purpose of having you two together as two humans. The the actual potential of what all of that is and begin to live into that potential. And um, it didn't take very long once once those things started to get clear that you saw some massive changes um, in Kyle, your husband. You want to talk about that? You want me to show the picture? <laughs> I love to show the picture. Can, can you show the picture? I can show do the you picture. have a way of bringing it up right now? I do. Okay. I would love for you to show it. Let me let me mute myself. I'm actually going to tell Kyle to possibly bring the kids outside. One second. I'm gonna take off some other stuff back here. So I'm gonna, that's uh this is whoop. there we go. So these are you guys right here. They're working on it right now. Um yes, okay. So this was let's see the timeline. This was before, right before story was born, my second born. So then that would have been. That would have been in 2021. Um, I think this was June of 2021. I was pretty pregnant then. So on the left side, what you're seeing is, is Kyle in June of 2021. And then basically exactly a year later. But I kid you not, what what's crazy is, well, it was a perfect comparison because it's the same photographer, same kind of backdrop, same kind of position. But the Kyle on the left was still the Kyle on the right, even just right before the couple's container started with Michelle. And essentially, the best way I could describe it is, you know, in our relationship dynamics and not knowing our mapping, but kind of taking the mapping of a traditional marriage or whatever we had learned in, you know, wise counseling, Christian counseling, church counseling, marriage books, you name it, we've read it, we've tried it, we've tried to uh, build a strong family unit and family dynamics based on what we knew at the time. And what Michelle invited us to do was take off the mapping, the old mapping that we have been putting on us from, you know, essentially, um, essentially old customs that no longer serve us in the present day and where we're headed as an age where we have evolved as humans and what we need in the present day 
is for us to really understand, which is an, an indigenous understanding, but taking it to the present, um, who we are on this earth and be able to map out our families, our giftings. And when we were able to do that through our container and for Kyle to understand, Kyle, my husband, to understand his purpose in our marriage and our family um, within literally a matter of a few days, he basically doubled his size um, everywhere, just expanded into what, I, what, we, what we call, what we jokingly call a second puberty because it was a physical, emotional, mental, uh, sexual, it was everything that he, it was essentially like he had, he had become stuck at a certain age really. And like had been, had stayed stuck there because that's essentially with, with, when Michelle references the words, um, glitches in time, it's essentially when these, like there's a kind of this frozen effect and you get stuck in this younger or this version of yourself where there are these glitches that happen in your timeline. And essentially Kyle was stuck in a glitch. I was uh, perpetuating the, the frozen um, stuckness, let's say I was keeping him there. And so we were feeding into that, which was me kind of carrying the family on my back and holding the, um, holding both the masculine and the feminine roles in my family. And Kyle was just kind of in the shadows. Kyle was just kind of kind of there, you know, checking out and really into Reddit threads. He loved Reddit at the time. It's kind of like his version of video games, let's say. Um, I think of the modern man just getting lost in, mm -hmm. let's say his like Saturday football or check video games. That was, Reddit was Kyle's, was Kyle's thing that he was just able to check out and kind of like, you know, to build this um, kind of dopamine and cortisol and just kind of keep him going, right? So um, yeah, we went through the couples container and literally once he, even just to cognitively understand who he is on this earth, he just took it and ran with it. And to watch his body change, my body change as a result, my, um, something that I've uh, shared with Michelle before is like, for example, the width of like my, my girdle around my hips, when I gave birth to my second, my second born, I grew beyond that. Even after I had given birth, just because my body was opening in a receptive sense for the mm -hmm. first time in my marriage and be, being able to actually receive the love and the protection that my husband wanted to give. So my body changed energetically and physically as a response to his growth and um, purpose in our family. So that was, that was a huge shift for us. And I remember Kyle, what's so funny is, uh, was watching a lot of our friends were gone off of Island whenever we went through this couples container. And when they came back and saw Kyle for the first time, the shock factor was very entertaining to us to just kind of watch what people, what people's response were. Cause it was undeniable. That's the thing. It was undeniable. The amount of space that Kyle now took up in his community and his family on the earth. And so he, you know, he'd be walking down the beach and people would come up to him. He just had this magnetic, uh, just rhythm about him where people would come up to him and stop him and just kind of be like, do, do I know you? Like, do you have something for me? Just like something, no. something's there. Uh, and so, yeah, that's been a, a more entertaining part for us to sit back and now watch the ripple effect of the clear, um, the clear impact that it has had for people just to witness yeah. what has happened with our family. Corey, I want you to, um, and so one of the things I'm seeing in this photo is, is, is the body positions, right? So Kyle is, is, is in flexion, which is a very airway typical, um, collapsed posture. And he's looking at Koa, who's also pulled back. Right. And then the second photo, they're like, Rawr. I mean, they're just like, they're just like open and, and, and going out into the world, like they're getting it, you know, and, and I, I see, I see the inner, just the energetic difference. 
And then one of the things that you've noticed just recently is the changes in Koa's body. We don't have a picture of, of before and after with Koa. And then Brianna's going to speak to this too, but the changes you're seeing in your son's bodies without therapy, without body work, without a myo munchie, without any kind of doing to, your boys are beginning to mirror their dads and the the energetic openness and power of their fathers, which I think is just exactly in line with the energetic ecology of what you're creating in your families. Do you want to talk about that just briefly, what you're seeing with that? Uh, absolutely. Because uh, let me bring us back once again to kind of put myself in the shoes of where I was prior, which was, okay, we do, 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 do. We do all this body work to help them. And yet, you know, when Koa turned about, um, I think it was two and a half, suddenly he just kind of went, mm, I think I'm done with the phys physical input. I think I'm done with the physical input, just kind of rejected it. And I was like, ah, okay, I like, gotta trust it. He'll be ready for the physical input when he's ready. Um, and yet what's, what I realized is he invited us to stop focusing on the physical input for a second, for a, for a bit, to be able to understand that it is not just about the physical input. And so even to watch that, and pay attention to, like pay attention to what your children are showing you. And it is mind blowing to see that his wisdom in his body said no, because that's not it. That is not the whole picture. And so for Koa, um, we not even touching his body to watch what has happened literally just as a mirroring to the parents, which is, that is the whole point is going back to that situation where the mother a baby's born and she's like, what? Like, how do you have a, a tongue tie or a lip tie? Like I did all the things, I did all things. And so much of a, I'm looking out and I'm going, you, you, you are presenting the problem when really like, if I flip that around and I looked at my own family and I looked at myself and how I'm creating space in my body and what my dynamics look like with my husband and my family and in our environment, then what could we what would we see? It would just be the most incredible transformation taking place in our, in our community around us. And so even just the witnessing of people witnessing our family has created the critical thinking of, wait a second, you know, let's say a mother was like, okay, we're not going to do a tongue tie release. And then years later, she's like, oh, dang, I wish I had done the tongue tie release because their body just wasn't able to get the, get the results through the body work alone. That's exactly right. It's not just about the body work. It is only one spoke in the wheel. And so even for Koa now, um, it, uh, I'll, I'll give more of a practical example of that. Something in, that is very specific to Kyle and I's mapping is that we are great um, judges of character and great judges. That's something that is in, in our gifting um, specifically. So don't, so don't hear this and put that on your family as a mapping. It's just something very unique to us. And with that, Michelle kind of invited us to this prompt. And that's kind of what Michelle does. She puts this prompt together and then it's really up to you to take that prompt and to play that out in your family. Cause she's not She's not saving your family, you know, she, you, you go heal your own family. Um, and so one of the prompts that she gave us was just introducing this, us to this idea of, you know, what um, the kind of essence or energy of that judgment could be or how that could play out in our children. And so, so something that Kyle, who is more of that um, strong opinion, he's really stepping into this uh, having opinions really for the first time in, our, in his life, which was a great program for him to run out because he's using his voice for the first time. Um, and so with that came, you know, some very strong opinions about uh, everything, any, anything and everything. And so uh, uh, kind of a prompt that Michelle invited him to do was just to understand, okay, so with judgment, what is 
constructive versus destructive and something that she teaches about the throat and opening the throat is it's less about the voice, but it's more about understanding and to have understanding you remove judgment. And so within the matter of about three or four days of Kyle really intentionally going, okay, how do I have constructive opinions and judgments for anything around me? And I watched him so beautifully take that and take ownership of it and then kind of flip it. Um, Koa literally started opening his neck and opening his throat. And one time I, and I told Michelle this, he was laying on the ground and I was kind of, um, inviting him to expand his ribs. And so I was like, what would happen if you sent your ribs this way and this way at the same time? And so he started doing that. And as he started doing that, he started tipping his, his head back and opening his throat. And I saw more of my son's neck than I had ever seen in my entire life. And then Brianna, who's our next door neighbor was like, did Koa get taller? Like, you know, um, over just a couple days of him going through these shifts. And so, um, that would be just something that I, uh, would love to share is just being able to once again, notice and pay attention to what your child is teaching you and leading you through. And then secondly, just that ecology piece of sometimes it has nothing to do with how much body work you're giving your child or finding the perfect body work practitioner around you so you can keep going back to the body work. It's so much more about the energetics of your home and then what you are allowing your child, choosing to allow your child to mirror as a part of you. Um, so making these shifts is so sustainable. Go ahead. How old is Koa right now? He's four. Okay, so she, her four-year-old, she prompted her four-year-old to, in his body, create space by going two different directions at one time. This is huge. Most of us are not able to do this because we are so conditioned and programmed through school and our culture that there can only be one answer. There's only one direction. You cannot hold two seemingly opposing concepts at one time because that used to be called intelligence. Now it's called cognitive dissonance. Yeah. So we've reframed the idea of basically creating division where there was unity and trying to, to, to work in, in duality alone, but getting back to non-duality or, or not good, bad, right, wrong without judgment is like a completely new space. And it's a, it's a demonstration of, of, of consciousness. Okay. We'll say that. And to be able to do that. Right. So a four-year-old just embodied that. So what do you think that's going to do to his mind? Oh, I can probably hold what seems like two opposing ideas at one time and be curious about that rather than judgmental or, you know, or throwing away something that might be useful to me at some point, which I think is amazing. And, and, and this is, um, I'm going to, I'm going to make this point and then I want Brianna to talk about, I really want you to talk about Aspen too, but okay. Um, so, so mirroring and rapport. So what I tell parents is that from the time, from the time you're, you're in, you're, you've got your infant, they, the highest form of safety is physical rapport. I look like you, so you're not going to kill me, right? Cause you would be killing a part of yourself. So that's primal safety. It goes back to animals, right? So that's, that's the mammal in us is I look like you. And the more I look like you, the safer I am. So even though a pattern or a restriction may not be in the child, they might be holding that pattern because it's in the parent and the, the child is, here we go. So the child is on the parent. So the child feels the parent and then mimics and mirrors that, right? So it may not be that child's pattern. It might be the parent's pattern. And so I like to point this out because what we've seen in, or what I see is when I, I help the parent change, and this is in the structure bubble, right? Change their pattern of movement. 
the child begins to change. So in the world of myofunctional therapy and airway dentistry, one of the hardest things to do is get a toddler's mouth closed because so many toddlers are open mouth posture. Well, what happens is when the parent repatterns their movement, the child automatically begins to close their mouth because they get head and neck changes that derotate the jaw and allow for lip competence, which changes the whole microcosmic orbit, the whole meridian system, because now they've got the connection here with the tongue to the palate and the lips together, which creates more voltage in the system. So it creates this very positive feedback. So mirroring and rapport are huge concepts that carry massive leverage in the ecology of the system. And then the other part of that is like, I could do a whole thing on how I, my, my theory that our kids are gridding out the planet. Um, basically where our children thrive is where that consciousness, that being really wants to live and thrive and the, the thrival of our children is imperative to the to the um integrity and the health of of the species so um so i i've coached and and worked with a lot of families who are like wow our child does well here and i'm like you might want to think about where your life needs to be and it's not always hawaii some kids are like total mountain kids once they get charged or they're total like uh northern latitude kids where they can be you know they're running around naked in the snow i mean it's just it's really about that dna and where it wants to to thrive okay so brianna tell tell talk about the transformation story that you've um, that you, we're going to look at koa but i also want you to talk about aspen and then some of the stuff if you can what you and colin have gone through too yeah. So, man, um, I love Michelle. Um, just what really, I think early on really just like helped me repattern a lot of things was, um, you speaking on like expansion versus collapse. Um, and you know, you can look, you know, us just observing our kids, um, and, you know, even compartmentalizing in some ways, you know, like, let's look at their face, let's look at their arms, um, the way they act, you know, whatever it is, you know, is, is this going toward expansion? Are we moving toward expansion or are they in some ways, you know, in collapse? Um, and that helped it just like totally, I, I was able to look at my child and say, well, in some very obvious ways, they're definitely looking collapsed. Um, it's so easy. I think in that frame to like Corey was saying, um, kind of be like, okay, well then now you need to do this, 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 and this, and this, and you need, you know, versus looking at ourselves and saying, oh, I look like I'm collapsed in that area as well. And it's not just structural, it's energetic, it's spiritual, it's, you know, emotional, it's whatever. So anyways, that, that's a huge, that was just a huge mindset shift for me, like a huge paradigm shift of, um, okay, in what ways then can we help support expansion? um, in all of the ways I just mentioned. So, um, with Koa, I guess would be, he would have been like a typical like airway case. Um, I just, uh, in me didn't have the belief system of let's go in and like, you know, do like a tongue tie, lip tie release. Um, I was more of the, let's, let's work this out through body work, you know, let's, let's holistically do this. Um, and what I experienced, which you can see in this picture. So, this picture is actually only a month apart. Um, and ironically, um, and this is recent, um, we've gone through a ton just as a family, um, uh, Colin and I as a couple, um, uh, energetically just, I mean, I, it's hard to even like put into words, honestly. Um, but specifically this picture, um, Koa, on the left, I have a Koa as well. Um, he, you can tell, I mean, he's, he's smiling for a picture, right? And he's, you know, he's got this going on, you know, he's, you can tell that there's some just um, restriction here. Um, and I tried, was trying to get an after picture because what I started to do was literally just speak over him and speak to him, believe for him. Um, oh my gosh, I can tell that your mouth is expanding. I can tell that you're your neck is expanding just, and again, 
with a lot of other things, but this, this picture again, a month apart, um, <laughs> as I was trying to get an after picture, cause I noticed things starting to shift so quickly. He literally, I mean, he's literally doing this. He's holding his neck like, and would not <laughs> like kind of like smile normally. Right. But he literally is like, here I am, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, you can tell in his teeth, you can tell in his just like, like this entire region here. Um, but yeah, so with that though, I mean, I would say that body wise, he does mirror Colin quite a bit. Um, but also he mirrors me. And as I have, um, stepped more into kind of just a woman, um, just feminine femininity, like, um, oh, Brianna, yeah. this would be a good time. Can we talk about your butt? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I don't have that picture, but holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. You posted um, before and after pictures of your backside and you were like, your hips were like unlevel oh, and rotated wow. and tore. Yeah. And I was like, holy moly. <laughs> and then the next one, you got like this, this like perfect butt. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I like, it, oh my no, God. It, honestly, and not even like, again, a lot of things leading up to that, but there was almost just this, like Corey has been saying about like Kyle, this, just the shift, um, you know, people would maybe would look at that and be like, oh, she's been doing squats or, um, oh, she's been in the gym or something, or, oh, she's eating differently. Like I guarantee you none of those things <laughs> have happened, but, um, but yeah, I mean, even that, like, um, I was showing, um, uh, my friend, like, she's like, your, your shoulders are, are, are slimmer. Your, your waist is smaller, but your hips look wider. you you know, just all of these more so like feminine things, even, you know, that Corey was even talking about, but, um, as my body started to change, I mean, his, his body just mi mirrored so quickly. Um, and these, those two things I, I noticed at, at the same time. Um, and it's incredible. So moving on to Aspen, um, a second born, uh, he was breech again, home birth, but, um, was stuck up in there for a little while, uh, was definitely, I wish we had before and afters, but, um, just, he's just kind of was a little smushed. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyways, just energetically as well, just like, just kind of like, you know, in, in collapse in some ways. Um, and I wish I had a before and after of Colin as well. I'll try to, I'm, I'll, try to get a picture, but I had a lot of body changes. Yeah. Even him, like just this opening here. And it's incredible. Like Aspen doesn't even look like the same child. Like he has like his neck has expanded. His body is elongated. Um, yeah. It like makes me emotional, like thinking about, cause I think the One very intense session we did with him, I actually did work on Aspen and one very intense session that we did with him with a lot of inversion and actually informing his hips where to go in the in the the plane of space it was very emotional and um and everybody noticed immediately after it was done but we really informed that that hip those hips yeah uh, he was upside down but we informed the hips you know back and uh, really allowed his spine to elongate. Um, and it was a very dramatic session. I remember you cried a good bit and you were very emotional, but I felt like that was a big turning place. Was, um, yeah. Aspen. And then also, um, I think another big turning point for Colin was the same as Kyle is he realized who he is, yeah. you know, he's, he is such a, he, he is here to be a blessing to other people. And once he went through the, the deconstruct on that and came up on the other side, boy, it was on. I mean, you guys started like your, your ideas started dropping in your creativity started. I mean, it just, everything just started opening up and I was like, Oh, okay, here we go. We here. Everybody's here. Hey, you know, and it was, yeah. it was, such a, it was such a beautiful moment. And I can, I can, I've, I've, I've noticed Colin, you know, just his, and, and like Kyle too, there's the body changes and how much he's really in his body now. It's just incredible. Yeah. And, and even the last, these last, like, it's almost like they, things change, like can, they just continue to expand. Like 
I, that's kind of that like, yeah, it, it's, he's continuing to expand as like, I know Kyle's like, we, we all are, I think are continuing to expand. But as, as I see Colin expanding, I look over at Aspen and I'm like, this is, it's just incredible. Like, I, I wish, I wish I had like a time lapse, <laughs> you know, know. Like, of, of, and I'm, I'm going to be better about taking pictures, but yeah, it's, it's been incredible. Yeah. Watching your boys open up and now Aspen, when he's on his bike, you know, just doing his little push bike and his little booties back and up and his neck is long. He's go, you can see his crown, his bot, his head going up and his, and his hips going back and he's so open and confident. And it's just really beautiful to see. And, you know, I want to, I want to make a, a point here is that, you know, um, and Brianna, you, 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 you made reference to this. You said, I wanted to do this holistically, but your definition of holistic was not surgery. And I want to, I want to offer this to people who are watching this. It's not one or the other. I teach a surgery class. I teach a trademark surgery class on how, how to work with babies in the surgery and conscious ways and have nonverbal communication with with the baby and then work with the 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 laser uh, practitioner to to know when we're complete when we've gotten like full opening and we we actually uh imprint and inform tissues in the chair to get the maximum benefit after there's a foundation created of energetic potential ready to be set free and I think that that's the real key and that's where we're missing it now um, with a lot of the sequencing and trajectory uh, trajectories that we're seeing whereas we've we've and and I helped put this model together you know eight ten years ago is well you you make sure that there's a therapeutic um you know there, there's some informing of the of the oral pieces that there's a um um that there's a piece for the um, uh, the the body movement, the restriction, the mo removing of restrictions and things like that. Um, you want to make sure all those things are in place and that there's good timing. But if you drag that back a little bit further, there's still so much more you can build as potential to release into into freedom. And there's some children who absolutely benefit from releases. There is no doubt about that. Um, however, I think we're getting to the point now, and I knew this was going to happen even six and seven years ago, would reach a tipping point where probably, but the research doesn't indicate this, that kids getting the procedure are not getting those dramatic um, freedom, you know, the freedom experience, or it doesn't, it's not sustainable, right? So then they get to be two and three years old, and they look like they've never had anything done. And what's happening now is a lot of... Um, a lot of shadowy kind of archetypal stuff where there's a lot of blame or a lot of um, they're going back and, and blaming, uh, shooting the messenger, you know, or, or making uh, practitioners into targets, which is um, really not fair because our children are changing rapidly. And if we don't keep up with that, that onus is on us, you know, to notice those things. Um, so the people fighting for the the sequencing of care and all that, that serves a, a good purpose. However, we've got to back up and expand on this and um, and have ways to work in all three of these uh, spheres that make us human and not just focus on the structure. Yeah. And you guys are done that. You're doing that. It's incredible to watch. So where do you guys go from here? Um, I was just about to say, I think Corey, you, um, mentioned this earlier, kind of that like sustainability or like even like regeneration piece, um, regenerative piece, I guess. Um, now I think because we have the foundation laid because we have honestly done a lot of work, um, to, um, kind of, kind of go back right to where, to the beginning or like re restart, we have our foundation. Um, now, I guess at least what we're doing right now is when things do come up, when we see symptoms, um, they're telling us something. They're, it's information. Um, it's incredibly important and helpful. Uh, whereas before, maybe I would have seen it as an, the issue. We got to go fix the issue, you know? 
Um, now, you know, if, if COA is presenting in some type of way or if Aspen is presenting in some type of way, um, and, you know, obviously, like, they will as they continue to grow, um, now it's more of a, okay, what is this telling us? Like, what, what could this mean? And, um, you know, what, and looking at it now from the lens of actually holistically, <laughs> um, of looking at the structure um, emotionally, spiritually, um, looking at our environment, um, energetically, how Colin and I are doing, really just like the ecology, the environment that we've created for our kids. What do we need to shift? What do we need to look into? Is there something that is coming up that is from our past or that is environmental, whatever it is. And it's been really fun, um, especially like Corey and I go back and forth. We're like, oh, what could that be? What do you think this is? You know, um, and it's it's instead of going to why is this happening? Um, you know, why, why it's, it's rather that it's, um, okay, this is, this is happening. This is presenting itself and, um, it's here for a reason. And, um, you know, what is it, what is it saying? What is it saying? Um, what is it showing us? Um, so yeah, that's, I guess in a general sense where we're at now and it's, it's one, it's fun. Um, but then two, it's just, it's very, um, hopeful, um, our family just feels like there's nowhere to go other than to expand. Um, it just, it feels so it's free. It, it, in every sense of the word, it's, it's freedom. And it's really cool. Like Colin and I have always been about freedom. And I think we can now look back in hindsight and say that we had understanding. We had the, you know, the understanding of what freedom potentially could be. But until we stepped into freedom in, you know, all the areas we've been talking about, um, Michelle, you were mentioning this the other day, and maybe you can speak to it um, better than I can, but uh, just that the experience um, versus just like the head knowledge of things, we have experienced freedom, we've tasted and seen. And so now there's nowhere to go other than to expand and to expand into freedom and to continue to build our families and to um, like help our children, like you said, like map out where they're going to be and who they are on the planet. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, yeah, uh, that's, that's important because what you've, what you've allowed yourself to do is to take your focus off of what was wrong and then take it in as information, make intelligent decisions. And I would say that whatever comes up in the future, um, you're prepared to make decisions about Koa and Aspen's, you know, if you're going to do orthodontics and what that means and, and all the whole thing, you already know those things. Now you're ready, you're set. And then the other thing this has allowed you to do is, is um, take So you, so what's available to most people on the internet is information. It's data, right? But yeah. they don't have experience with it, which is what creates knowledge. Yeah. And so they, or they'll go have an experience with say body work or surgery. And they think that that's, that's, that's a form of knowledge, but what happens is they haven't pulled it through to the knowing there's a deeper, there's a deeper place of the, the internal ecology of being congruent with what's true for you. And a lot of people are going against their belief systems and violating themselves because they don't have the belief system around what's being presented to them, but they don't know what else to do. Right. Right. So they'll they'll compartmentalize or they'll they'll uh, um, dichotomize their 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 ecology to to do this thing because they don't know what else to do, but it violates their belief system. So now they're incongruent with themselves. And then um, so being able to take information, convert that to an experience or have knowledge and then translate that into a knowing that's an ecological congruent knowing with yourself, which becomes the basis of wisdom. So it's that trans trans uh, that that transfer of data to an experience to knowing to wisdom is what is what you're referring to. So, Corey, where do you guys go from here? Well, something that I thought about whenever you asked that question is just this image of let's say a mom or ourselves holding on tightly to whatever version of ourselves that we are like, or whatever version of our family or whatever picture of our family that we are holding on to. 
And are you willing to burn all of that down? Our marriage, we burned completely down to rebuild. And so I think once you experience a death like that and you go through a mini death, whether it's in your marriage or yourself, you're you're fearless as far as what could come up in the future. You're willing to burn anything down as it comes up. So the, uh, detachment, what's a better word to use the kind of just the, the openness, the freedom, the, the suppleness, the unattachment, yeah, unattachment that we have experienced and given ourselves the gift of through Michelle's mentorship and get, and being able to, um, move through our bodies, what that feels like to shed off this snake skin of your old self, of your old patterning and move into a brand new person that looks differently, acts differently, shows up in the world differently. Um, where we go from here, wherever it is, we are totally open to, and we have the eyes and the understanding and the ears and like the the sixth sense to even pay attention to where that goes from there and so just kind of like a question I hear Michelle ask a lot is um are you willing to burn it down and are you willing to shed that old part of you and for a lot of people they're not quite ready for that yet and so but once you give yourself that gift when you are ready not if but when you are ready once you give yourself that gift where you go from here is totally like sovereignly and sustainable your yours within your sustainably yours within your family to move forward. And I remember to give you an example of that before I did the couples container where we worked on our family dynamics and um, just freed ourselves up in, in all areas. I love that word that Brianna used. We were thinking about leaving Maui, moving down to uh, Mexico, we were very seriously considering it. And I had this block that came up that was like, wait, 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 if I move, I don't have my chiropractor. I don't have Michelle. I don't have all these people that I go to for support for my family. And that was when I realized the question, do I believe that I have everything that I need within me, within our family to be able to sustainably move forward in expansion and freedom and wellness and vibrancy and vitality and health. And so I was like, whoa, I'm noticing myself outsourcing and how can I give that to myself? And so I think that was the greatest gift that I walked away with from working with Michelle was knowing that we could be anywhere, we could go anywhere and have the tools to be able to have this unbelievably strong foundation as a family and then raise our kids in that foundation and move towards expansion and wellness and absolute yeah vibrancy yeah and I think Brianna you and Colin similarly you guys now have the the energetic and structural foundations in your bodies and your marriages to build anything on anything because I remember when I looked at you, Corey, this summer and you're like, and I'm thinking she's ready for her next thing, but her marriage can't handle it. And, and I knew it and I knew it. And I'm like, she's going to want to talk about her next thing. And I'm like, girl, you, your marriage cannot handle another thing. And Mm -hmm. now your marriage is absolutely expressing the next thing. So you're, you're, what's happening is you're, monogamous union is actually serving your purposes in a beautiful way for both of you and both of you have now this this um you can spiral all go around to your next level your next go from six figures to seven figures to you know the 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 infinity that you're creating with this foundation is just immeasurable I mean you're you're you guys could do any you literally can do anything now so and that's true freedom is the unattachment so there's this massive freedom and unattachment Brianna what were you going to say yeah um I think you um at the beginning of our container Michelle had this vision for our family and she was like oh yeah you're going to be doing this this and this you're going to be in real estate you're going to have this and this and Colin and I were like you know 
no. <laughs> like we're trying to get out of real estate, you know, like we're, we're trying to do other things, Michelle. Like, thank you, but no thanks. No. And now that we've, like you said, spiral, spiral all geared back around. I truly believe, I really do feel like we can do anything. And, and ironically, it's exactly what you said. <laughs> It's not ironic, but uh, ironically, um, but no, I, I fully like even in like moving into just like business relationships, I can now show up as the woman that I am and just be present, be there, be willing to, you know, whatever comes my way, we can handle it. We can work through it. It's fun. Uh, I feel vibrant and radiant and yeah, it's just, it's fun, honestly. And before I think I would have had to bring things with me, um, attachment to me showing up to the challenge. Um, what, you know, whatever else I was like holding on to. I, I, I saw you trying to step into a version of yourself. That's not congruent with who you are. And now everything just flows through you and from you. And it's, it's so fantastic. It's honestly, there's just such an ease to it. Like it's, it's being versus doing I I could do before, right. I could pack my bags and go do, and now it's just, yeah, it's just easier to show up and be. And it's so much, again, it's just the simplicity of, of things coming from your being rather than you trying to pick things up and, and put things together and hold, hold things together and spin all the plates, wear all the hats, you know? a lot. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't think of, I mean, I, so many, so many practitioners lately who have talked to me about their, their body work practices or their lactation practices or what they're trying to build or do, um, you know, and I can tell, and I, I look at them, I'm like, your marriage can't handle what you're trying to create. It's not going, it's actually, it'll fly and your marriage is going to go ahead and go kaput. Um, or you'll never have the the love and connection that you want out of it because you don't you don't have the foundation for it yet. You're trying to build on top of of something that's not the truth for you. Um, and they're like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, you know, it's it's just pretty. It, it gets it gets to be pretty obvious. And and I think part of that is that you know I know that from experience. I know that from experience. And um and and honestly the you know, at my stage of life, when I look back and I can see the, how all of that fits together and then what can happen from that, not good, bad, right or wrong. It's just that when you begin to, to shift in those directions and actually get charged and actually live from your truth, it will change your life. And um, sometimes what was in the past doesn't follow you into the future. And sadly enough, that's the truth. Um, however, I think though that there are so many couples like yourselves who are in this young, this this beginning part of life where you're having children and and you can have it all. You can have the beautiful family. You can have the amazing relationship. You can have you can create the foundation on which to build your empire, and it's congruent and everybody can feel it. Yeah, everybody knows it. It's the power couple vibe without the falsity and the bravado, right? Yeah. So it's not an envy gram, um, you know, like smoke, smoke and mirrors thing. No, it's true. It's real. That's the real deal. I, Corey, I can't tell you how many messages I got from, oh, did you work on Kyle? I'm like, no, <laughs> oh, Kyle, this is all him. This is, this is him you know, just connecting all those pieces and pulling them back through and, and developmentally getting, you know, uh, matched to his age and stage. It's, it's, it's what happens. And that's what our, that's what our indigenous and first peoples used to do. They used to initiate men into that so that they were congruent and ready to build, you know, whatever the, their purpose was. Um, but we don't have that anymore. Forgetfully sadly. And it's showing up in our faces and it's showing up in our bodies. Unfortunately. Yeah. Gosh, this was so good. You guys, I really appreciate you being here. Do you have any, any last things you want to close with? You guys feel complete. Um, I'll just say it's incredible how 
hard. And I, I think this is relatable to moms and dads, but you know, we want what's best and what's right for our kids and for our families. And the lengths at which we will go in whatever our belief system is at the time, with whatever capacity we have to at the time, are incredible. And so I'm going to get emotional. You know that there's not a lack of try and of, um, of like will willpower. Um, we just needed, and Michelle, this is what you so beautifully have placed in front of us as, as a prompt, as a pick this up when you, when you can, um, is just that piece of, yeah, like we needed the foundation. We worked to get it right now that we have it. There's yeah. Not only is there, there, um, no place we can't go, but it's incredible the amount of work. Yes, we had to put work into, you know, like kind of deconstructing some things, burning some things down, um, going back and making peace with certain things, um, and then pulling things kind of into the future. And uh, just, I don't know, I'm I'm so grateful for you, Corey and Michelle, that our family was able to just pick pick up what you were offering, honestly. And and really what that is is a um I don't know, just like a a maybe not even a roadmap, but really, really a are you willing to go back to the way that we were created, do the things, um, set up the ecology, um, step into the bodies, the mind, um, just spiritually, all, all of those things that will help you expand, succeed, support all of those things so that you can not only make the best decisions for your family, but again, like have that sustainable, we are a family unit unit, and we have what we need here. Um, and I, I think you just so beautifully, yeah, you, you lay that out and you basically say, do you, do you want to get well? You know, <laughs> do you want to do this? <laughs> and you, you know, and it's our job as, as a family to say, yeah, I'm going to take on the radical responsibility. I'm going to take this on and I'm, we're going to go through it as hard as it may be. You know, it's like, choose your hard, you know, like, yeah. are you wanting to, yeah, just what, what we were doing before was incredibly difficult. Yeah. And yeah. what we went through in some ways was incredibly difficult. And now just being able to have that cup that is overflowing so that we can pour out of um, it's, it's priceless, honestly. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I know one of the people in the container that we finished up recently was like, all my dreams came true. Yeah. Like, yeah, they do. It's really beautiful. Corey, you have a final word. Hey story. <laughs> I think that the image I got whenever Brianna was talking was just this idea of like swimming upstream and this idea of like doing all the things and putting all this work in, but you're really just swimming upstream. And if you figured out the current of where your family is supposed to head and where it wants to head and where it would be so much more congruent to head that direction, <laughs> then it's like, whoop, we got it. Like we got it. It's like out here on the floor. If you get in that stream that's headed to Tahiti, that's where you go. <laughs> it's like, okay, stay away from that current because that current goes to Tahiti. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I just I couldn't agree more with what Brianna was saying about just like doing all the things and it being so hard. I can't even explain how even if we're doing the same day-to-day -day schedule as a family how much more seamless and um, smooth and how much more capacity we have. And so how much more we flow as a family because we have figured out those dynamics that are best for our family. And she loves, she loves the string. So I just think the, the, the river, the river analogy is exactly how I, how I would sum that up. I love it. All right, you guys, on that, on that note, we're gonna, we're gonna go. So thank you all for joining us and uh, yeah, there'll probably be some more stuff in the comments. So thanks. Thanks.